Hi, my name is Olivia, I'm a medical student here in the UK and welcome to my channel, The Dyslexic Clinic. In today's video, I'm going to be talking a bit about medical history. This isn't something that we're really taught that much about at uni, so I thought I'd explore it a bit. Today, I'm going to be talking about the Thomas Splint. So, what is a Thomas Splint? A Thomas Splint is a device that's used in orthopaedics for femoral shaft fractures. It was originally invented in 1865 by a man called Hugh Owen Thomas, who is now known as the British father of orthopaedics. Its original use was actually for knee issues, particularly those caused by TB, and was only used for tractional fractures later. It was designed to be as simple as possible, so it was affordable to all who needed it. Designed with an oval ring to fit around the top of the leg with two sidebars connected at the bottom, strapping could then be applied to create traction. This caused the two ends of the femur to be pulled apart, restoring the leg to its original shape and length. This aids healing and helps reduce long-term disability. It wasn't widely used until World War I when Thomas's nephew, Robert Jones, brought it into prominence. It started more widespread use in 1916, which dropped the mortality rate from femoral fractures from 80% to 20%. This is obviously a significant reduction in mortality. It could even be placed over clothes and boots, which sped up patients' transport from the front lines to hospitals. So, why does this matter now? We actually still use the Thomas Splint now, in slightly more up-to-date or adapted versions, and it is still part of the treatment of some femoral fractures. Its simplistic design has lent itself to being updated over time and still helps save lives around the world today. This piece of technology is still in use 155 years after its original invention. I think sometimes it's good to look back and see where things came from, especially things we still use in hospital and in pre-hospital care, so we can appreciate and adapt these for the future. The references for this video are in the description box below if you're wondering where I got this information and want to do a bit of further reading yourself about this invention. That's the end of today's video. It's something a little bit different, but hopefully you found it interesting. If there's any other medical devices you'd like to know the history of, let me know in the comments below. Stay safe, wash your hands, bye for now.